club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Art club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Some of the time we might do drawing and painting But most of the time we will do painting and drawing Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art club! G'day and welcome to Art Club. My name is Bruce Shameful Affle. I'm Olaf's Australian cousin and he has specifically asked me to guest host today's episode because today's Art Club is going to be all about the sunshine. It's going to be about holidays because it's really depressing and snowing over there in the UK at the moment. So what better than to do an optimistic, sunshiny, holiday vibed Art Club? Yeah, so by the way, uh, the name Bruce Shank. Oh, who am I trying to kid? Of course, it's me, Olaf, but he was right. We are going to be doing an optimistic, sunshiny holiday themed art club because it is a bit snowy out there at the moment. How many of you went out and made a snowman? I did. Uh, my snowman looks a bit like this. See, even got the beard going there. Uh, oh, actually, whilst I'm pointing up there. I may as well put some of your pictures from last week up there. So what are we going to be doing in this week's episode? Well, like I said, it's going to be a holiday themed one. Well, actually, there is a bit of an Australian uh, connection in the first bit, the two-part drawing. It's going to be an animal that is indigenous of Bruce Shane Falafel's country. It's going to be a koala bear and it's going to be doing a spot of surfing. That's all I'm going to say for now. So you'll see that next. Uh, please, 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 please click subscribe if you haven't. Uh, also click like because you have to. That's the rules. Uh, share Art Club with your friends, with your teachers. If you're a parent or a teacher, share it with other parents or other teachers. That'd be really good. We're going to be learning later on about an artist called Juan Miro, who is really cool. And also there's going to be a, a cool little drawing exercise all to do with eyes and also uh, quite a fun, I don't want to give the game away too much, but it's quite a fun thing happening towards the end of the show. Anyway, stay tuned, keep watching and we'll crack on. Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club. Right, grab a pencil, grab a brush. It's time for the two part drawing bit. And I don't know how many times I have to explain this, but basically it's a drawing that we do in two parts. The first part is now and the second part is at the end. Now we're gonna be drawing a koala. It's probably one of the things I get asked to draw the most. The very first art club, we did a sloth on a skateboard and that was really popular. And I get asked loads to do a koala. And I thought to myself, it needs to be on something. It needs to be riding something like the sloth on a skateboard. Uh, so it's gonna be a koala. And and see if you can guess what it's going to be on and I won't tell you until the end but let's just say it's going to be surfing right grab a piece of paper grab something to draw with I've got my fancy brush pen as usual a lot of people have been asking about these brush pens uh, ask your mums and dads to follow me on Twitter and I'll tell them what they are and where I get them on Twitter so the first thing we're going to do is the nose now the nose of a koala is kind of it's, it's almost like a rectangle but rounded I'll, I'll show you what I mean so it goes something like this And then I draw some lines to give it some texture. Yes. Remember last week we did a bit of a lesson on texture. And we're gonna color this in later, so there we go. Underneath that we'll draw a little mouth. And I'll do a line across the middle of the mouth, color in the bottom bit black and leave the top white so they're his teeth. I give it two beady eyes. Koala bears have beady little eyes. We'll be doing a little bit more about eyes in the next part, so keep watching for that. Now we're going to do his face shape. Again, his face is kind of somewhere between a square and a circle. It's like a squircle, and it goes something like this. So I mean, it's, it's kind of like a rounded, circle square thing. There we go. And he's got two fluffy ears that kind of stick out, sort of like so, and another one that kind of goes. That. We'll colour those in later. We can do some pink bits in the middle of those ears. That will look really good. Uh, now, quick koala fact, they actually haven't got tails that you can see. So I'm going to be drawing this one sort of turned around so you see the back of him. And I won't draw a tail. Perhaps I could draw a little bump. Yeah, there we go. And he's going to be surfing, so I'm going to draw him balancing. So I'll draw one leg sort of just kind of bouncing there. And then I'll draw 
for his back legs, which is bent a bit more. And we're going to draw his arms. His arms are going to be kind of sticking out again. He's going to be using his hands to balance sort of palms out. So if I draw this palm first, sort of around about here, go one, two, three, and then a thumb. If we go around like so, and connect that arm like that. And then the back arm kind of doing the same but going off into the distance a bit so I draw a thumb there and then one, two, three, there you go. It's kind of doing that kind of surfer pose and then you just connect up the body again there. And that is our koala bear. We can add a few little kind of texture bits perhaps in the ears there. little bits of fur along his back there. But that is our koala. Come back at the end because we're going to draw him surfing on something. See if you can guess what he is surfing on in between then and now. Anyway, draw that and I'll see you soon. What's red and bad for your teeth? A brick! <laughs> and that joke has come from Dennis, age 8. Right, we're going to do a quick drawing exercise now all about eyes. Now eyes can be really, really simple or they can be quite complicated. I remember when I was a child at school, I got taught by an art teacher a way to draw eyes and I never forgot it. So I'm going to teach that to you guys. Uh, but like I said, there's lots of different ways to draw eyes. If I'm just drawing, say, a simple cartoon character, I'll quite often just do dots for the eyes. I mean, that's as simple as it gets, really. Just dots and then pop up the little eyebrow. I will sometimes, quite often if I'm drawing an animal, for some reason, I do the eyes like that. So little circles with the dots in the middle. That, there we go. I don't know what that is. Could be a cat, could be a dog. Uh, and also, there's lots of different ways. My own daughters, they do these kawaii eyes or anime eyes, which I've never quite understood, but I think what it is is if you leave like a circle there and then another circle and then you fill it in. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I could be massively wrong here. But I always think they look quite cute, those eyes. There we go, let's give it a little nose. What I'm gonna show you now though is that technique of how to draw a human eye. Now it starts off with a shape that is a bit like a lemon, I guess. So this kind of shape kind of has a little bit at the end there, and then it's semicircular, and then there you go. Now you can use a pencil for this. I would normally use a pencil, but I just really want it to stand out on the camera above. Now the next thing you do is the main circle of the eye, the iris. Now it tucks underneath the top, if you imagine it going underneath the top of the eye, but you can see the bottom of it, if you know what I mean. It goes like this. And again, if I was using a pencil and I got it wrong, I could rub it out. But that's not too bad. So see what I mean? It tucks underneath the top, so it would continue up there, but you can see the bottom. And then we draw the middle of the eye, the pupil. Again, that's a circle, just like that. And then over here, that little kind of tear duct. So I'll just draw a line like that. And then underneath, I draw the bottom of your eye. And then up here, I draw a line that kind of curves over the top. Now this top one has eyelashes that come straight out and go this way. So just do some curves that go this way. And then underneath, not straight out of the eye, but out of this line here, we'll do some more that just curve this way around, making it a little bit shorter. Now at the top, you can draw an eyebrow if you want to. So I'm just going to draw an eyebrow shape. Like this. So I'm going to colour this 
pupil in black, but I'm gonna leave a big white shade there. Shade, highlight, big white highlight there. And the highlight is basically where you just leave a white bit. And I'm gonna use my pencil to color in the actual eye. And one thing that I got taught when I was doing the iris of the eye is that it has lots of lines in it. And if you draw a line there and a line there, and a line there and a line there, and then keep dividing those areas with another line in the middle, and then pretty soon you've got eight lines, and then we divide those lines, and that's 16, and then we divide those, and that's 32. And you can do it one more time, and that's a really good way of making sure that those lines are kind of all equal spaced and almost like perfectly circular. You know what I mean. Anyway, I'm gonna try doing one more in between each one. Now I'm gonna shade this in with my pencil around this side. And then also at the top here like that. I'm doing it really quickly, and it's not a particularly great pen. I think I borrowed this one off my door. It might be a school pencil. And I'm gonna do a little bit of shading just underneath the eyebrow. And I'll do a little bit of shading just on both sides of this bit here. And I'll probably just do a little touch of shading this bit in a, a bit darker. So I've got a rubber here, it's a pencil rubber. I'm just going to try and take out a bit of my shading here. And what that will do is give me some little highlights. And there you go, a really quick and simple human eye. Why not have a go yourself? I hate Russian dolls. They're so full of themselves. And that joke has come from Kwame, age 12. Right, it's time for our Artist of the Week bit. And this week, it's an artist called Juan Miro. One minute artist, Juan Miro. Juan Miro is an abstract artist who was born in Barcelona, Spain in 1893. He moved to Paris in his 20s to live and work and returned to the Spanish island of Mallorca for the last 30 years of his life. His work combined a lot of the vibrant, vivid colours of the Fauvist artists like Matisse with the strange, dreamlike compositions of surrealist artists like Salvador Dali. He's an abstract artist, which means a lot of the things that he paints don't look exactly like the things that they're supposed to be. You can sometimes make out faces, eyes and animals in his work. This painting is called Dutch Interior. In the centre you can see a guitar being played. If you look closely you can see a dog at the bottom, a fish and a bird in the water in the background and also a creature that looks a bit like a bat. Miro often limited the amount of colours he used to create bold and expressive artworks. He also designed posters including this one for his home football club Barcelona and this one for the 1982 World Cup held in Spain. Miro once said, I never dream when I sleep, only when I'm awake. And that was Juan Miro in a minute. There you go. That was quite interesting, wasn't it? And also, a little bit... I know, I know. Educational. I'm really sorry, but, you know, we do learn a little bit in these art clubs. Anyway, Juan Miro was a really cool artist. I kind of like him because he kind of was a bit like sort of the fauves. Do you remember we did about Matisse? He was a fauve. Basically, that just means they have bright colours. And he was also a bit like a surrealist because, you know, some of his paintings look kind of a bit weird, a bit crazy, a bit dreamlike. So it was a bit like Salvador Dali. So it was almost like a crossover of those kind of artists. He was somewhere in between. And also because this is a kind of a holiday sunshine themed episode and Miro was a Spanish artist, I thought it would be great if we could do something that was perhaps a bit holiday related. So I am going to make a Miro mobile. Now, I don't mean like a mobile phone. I mean like a mobile where you've got like things hanging from it and it kind of spins around and looks really kind of cool. And what I'm going to do is make mine holiday related. So all of the bits that are hanging off my mobile are going to be in a Miro style, but kind of relate to a holiday that I've been on. You can make yours 
relate to your holiday or somewhere where you really enjoy being. It could be your garden, a park, uh, it could be your bedroom, who knows? Anyway, mine's gonna be related to a holiday, well, it's actually somewhere I go quite a lot because my sister lives there. And it's also, funnily enough, somewhere that Miro called home for a while. And it's Mallorca in Spain. And it's quite sunshiny in Spanish. And I thought it'd fit really well. So mine's gonna have things like ice creams and uh, sunshine. And there's a lot of cycling that goes on in there. So I might do a bike wheel or something. Anyway, you will need some stuff. Let me run through what you will need. It's quite a tricky one as well. So you might wanna get an adult to help you. You'll need some cards that's kind of like from a cardboard box. I've got that there. You will also need some thinner card. That will be for our bits that are going to be hanging. We'll need some cotton. I've got some cotton here. I've just got white cotton, but you can use whatever you want. I guess you could use string, but cotton just makes it kind of just a little bit more lightweight. You will need scissors. Be careful with those. Uh, sellotape. You do, yeah, you probably will need sellotape. And also, it's quite handy to have a hole punch. Uh, I can show you another trick using a biro for making a hole, but uh, yeah, we will be making holes as well. Like I said, it's quite a complicated one, so you probably want to watch it all the way through and then decide whether you need a grown-up to help you. I'm going to start by making a circle in this card. Now, I'm going to use uh, something to draw around. Actually, I've got a bowl that I got from Mallorca on holiday, so I'm going to use that to draw around and get... Actually, let's get this biro. This will come in useful in a bit, actually. And draw around... Now, what I need to do is find the center because that's just really helpful. And I'm gonna mark four points around the edge of our circle and they kind of need to be equal distance around. So bring them in a bit, actually bring them in a bit, like one centimeter from the edge. And we're gonna make holes in all four of these points. And we're gonna make the holes. I think I'll use, let me put my bowls one side, I'll use, this to make the holes. First, I'll cut out the circle, I think, because I need some leftover bits of card. Now, I'm gonna use these two leftover bits of card to rest my disc on, and then I'm gonna use my biro to punch a hole through. And just be careful when you're doing this all the way through. Make sure you're not too close to the edge. Just don't want it to split. And if you like, you can go back in the other end and just make that hole a bit clearer. And we do that with all of these holes, including the one in the middle. Now this is gonna be the top of our mobile and things are gonna be hanging from these holes here. So what I'm gonna do before I do anything else is decorate this and I'm gonna do a kind of a Miro sun kind of shape. And Miro is quite abstract, so it doesn't have to look exactly like a sun or have the exact same colors. I think I'm gonna start with a blue center. And then I think I'll do a black outline. And then I'm gonna use red to go around the outside of that. Very Spanish colors, these. And again, if you wanna be quite rough and ready, that just adds to the overall kind of Miro effect. So that's going to be my sun. Now this bit is going to be kind of facing you and this bit you won't see because this will be towards the ceiling. So you don't have to color that in. And what we're going to do is get four bits of cotton that are equal length. And I've got four pre-cut ones here. And they're kind of roughly about, oh, what's that, about 30 centimeters long. And what you're going to do one by one is tie each one into this hole, into a hole, not in the middle hole though, into one of the holes around the edge. And you tie a knot. It's a bit fiddly. If you've got big sausage fingers like mine, you might find this fiddly, but if you're a little child with 
little nimble fingers. Perhaps you'll find this a lot easier than I do. And then do a double knot so it doesn't fall off. And then you have to do that for all four. I'm definitely gonna put that in fast forward. Now what you should have are four ends, if I can pick it up, there we go, there's two of them. And gather all the ends like this with your colored bit face down. And once you've got them all together, you need to tie all four ends together. Try and keep it as flat and keep your hands in the center as possible. It sometimes helps if you spin it a bit once you've got all four. It helps you uh, tie a knot. So do that for a bit. And then once you've got a little spun bit like that, just tie a knot here. And if you tie another little knot here, it makes a little loop so you can hang this. If you do that, then you've got a knot there and a knot there. And then if you just peel apart these bits here, he says, you should be able to hook that onto something. Anyway, we're gonna get on now because what we're gonna do, actually what you can do, is just trim off these little ends here. So I'll do that quickly. So that is the base or the opposite of a base because it's hanging down, but whatever that is, it is it. And we are now gonna make the things that hang from it. And those things that hang from it are gonna be like, almost like little icons that represent your place. So mine's gonna be Mallorca, so I'm gonna do like an ice cream. I'll probably do another little cloud with the sun poking around it. Uh, I might draw a bike wheel, like I said. Um, I might draw someone swimming. Although uh, there was a picture that I saw of Miro's where he had some like feet and they had like uh, different colors in them. So I might just draw an arm coming out of the water. That'd be good. What else could I do? Well, Spain is quite famous for bullfighting. Uh, and I think bullfighting is a bit cruel. Uh, but I remember when I was last in Mallorca, I saw this road sign, and if I stood just right in front of it, I looked a bit like a matador, you know, the ones with the hats who do the bullfighting. I'll show you the picture, actually. It looks like this. So I might draw uh, a matador, and again, I'll do it in a Miro style, so it might look a little bit abstract, but you'll be able to kind of just make out what it looks like. What else can I do? Just make six, seven, eight different icons and do them on your bits of card and make them sort of roughly, I don't know, roughly sort of the size of a sellotape roll. So imagine each one is that kind of size and then we'll hang them from bits of cotton from our base. So what I'm gonna do, I'll do a couple and then I'll put it in fast forward. Let me do an ice cream first. Let me do a kind of a Miro style ice cream. So here's like a hand and then I might overlay So it looks kind of like an ice cream, but it's also a bit kind of abstract because the fingers and the cone are kind of overlaid. And then I'm going to color in each individual bit. So, and again, you don't have to use the colors that it is, if you know what I mean. I'm using some thick kind of chunky pencils that are really quite cool. I'm gonna try and use just a few limited colors. So I've got, how many have I got here? I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six colors that I'm gonna try and stick to. I've got a couple of belt tips as well that I might use, we'll see. But yeah, I'm gonna kind of try and keep it quite limited in my colors. Now, what you do next is cut this out. You don't have to be terribly neat cutting this out. What you might like to do is add a little kind of tab at the top. When I say tab, I mean, let me move these out of the way so you can kind of see a bit better. Something a bit like that. And what we're going to do with that is punch a little hole in it. Just using a hole punch, pop it in there, and, then boom, and we will use that to hang it. There'll be some others that we do 
where we do a, a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom. And what we'll do that for is so we can hang this one from our base and then we can hang another one from it. I don't think we'll do that. Oh, we could do that. We'll do that now. I'll show you what I mean. So if I pop that in there, make sure I get it all right. There you go. So this has got another hole in it. See that? And we'll do a bit of cotton hanging from there and a bit of cotton hanging from there. And we'll have another one hanging from there. Now what you need to do is turn this over because we need these to be double-sided because they will spin around. And try and do a reverse image. It sometimes helps if you hold this up to the light and you can see the one that you've just drawn through it. Another good tip is if you hold this against the window, that also makes a good kind of light box, almost makes it easier to see through. But there you go. That's me just holding it up to the light and drawing. And I can kind of see the one on the back through it. There you go. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat. Like we say on our club, there are no rules. But once you've kind of got the reverse of your drawing, again, colour it in. And you don't have to use the same colours. Just putting that on there. I think I'm going to go... Did I use... I can't remember what I used on the last one. What did I use? Did I use red? Oh, I did. I used red and white and blue fingers. I might do red and red again. I might do blue ice cream this time. And orange fingers or yellow fingers. There you go, something like that. Now we need to repeat this with lots of different icons. I will draw my matador one next, and then I will just carry on, and I will probably do, I'll probably do about eight, I reckon, seven or eight. Right, so now I've got my eight kind of icony, hangy things. I'm gonna thread some cotton between them and the base and then arrange them in a way that I think is quite nice and then I'm done. Actually, what I should say is, if you hang this up from something now before you attach all of your bits to it, it might make things a bit easier. I think that's what I'm gonna do now. If I open this cupboard here, I should have a little hangy thing. If I gather up my, not that one, if I gather up my threads and I open out this bit here that I was going to hang it from, come on, should be able to just keep it on there. And now I can hang my bits from it and it's just a bit easier. Also, when you're hanging the double ones, the ones that have two holes in, make sure you do those first. And then that way you can do one and get it to the right kind of height. Come on, there you go. And then you can do the one that's underneath it. So I think that one could hang from about there. So if I just tie that up and then I'll do another one from underneath it. I am definitely going to put that in fast forward too. Right, I hope you haven't got into too much of a tangle. Once you've got all of your bits tied on, then what you can do is go around and just trim off any loose ends, just to neaten it up a little bit. Make sure you don't trim the bits that are attaching it to the top. And there you have it. 
your very own Juan Miro mobile. I'm gonna put this against a white background so you can see it a bit better, but it would be great. I mean, I'd be amazed if any of you do actually make one, but it would be great if you do a million art club points to anybody who actually makes one of these and sends me a photo. You will have my utmost respect forever. But yeah, there it is, my Juan Miro mobile. You'd think snails would get quicker if you removed their shells. But in actual fact, it makes them quite sluggish. And that joke has come from Anisha, age 11. Right, you may remember in the first half of the show, we drew our koala bear, and he was kind of surfing, but he wasn't actually surfing on anything. And I told you I was gonna show you what he was gonna be surfing on. Now, koala, I wanted something that rhymed with koala, sort of, and something that would be stupid. Uh, so I just thought, koala on a banana. So we're going to draw a banana that he has stood on and he's going to be in the sea. We'll perhaps draw a wave as well. And you can kind of draw whatever you like in the background. You can draw some fishes or seagulls or, and we can perhaps have him saying something. So grab your pen that you were using and we are going to draw a banana. So he's going to be stood on this banana. So it's going to be like a flat bit here. It's going to kind of curve up slightly at both ends. And this end will have a little kind of square bit. It will come down like this. And then this end will have the kind of stalk bit on, which looks a bit like that. And then it will curve around. Now, I'm not drawing the bottom up quite yet because I'm gonna draw some like wavy lines will make it look like he's actually surfing on this banana. So put some wavy lines like that. Now this end has that kind of little bit at the end of the banana. So I've just drawn that. And then if we just draw a line there. And then also I'm going to draw like a black kind of broken splodgy line. It goes like so. Now all we need to do is draw a big wave he's just about to surf into. So I will draw wave like that. And then perhaps draw some more kind of C lines like this, not sea lines, but just like lines that show that he's in the sea. I've drawn one that's coming up to the back there. And then up here, something like that. And perhaps we could draw some little kind of splashes of water. So. I think I'm going to have my banana saying something. So remember the art club tip, write your words first and then do the speech bubble around. Otherwise, what tends to happen is you draw the speech bubble and then you run out of space. So do the words first, then the speech bubble. And he's saying, what's the matter? Never seen a koala surfing on a banana? Or as my old mate, Bruce Shane Falafel would say, what's the matter? Never seen a koala surfing on a banana? Apologies to anybody offended by my terrible Australian accent, by the way. All we need to do now is color this in and don't forget to sign it at the end. And there you have it, my finished
koala surfing on a banana picture. If you would like to win this, all I would like you to do is comment in the video below what alternative you could have instead of a banana that this koala could be surfing on. The funniest one will win this drawing. And the winner of my drawing last week, if you remember, it looked a bit like this. That lucky person, their name is coming up now. Congratulations if that's you. Email me at the address below so I can send you that drawing. And good luck to everybody else. And make sure that you share your koala on a banana drawings with me using the hashtag OlafArt. The thing that we're going to do now is a lot of fun and it's kind of based on a holiday that I went on when I was a child. I was only young and I'd been out on the beach for probably too long and I'd had too much sun and I'd had sunstroke, which I don't know if you've ever had sunstroke, but it's really bad. And then I think I'd eaten something as well that didn't agree with me. And basically, well, let me show you. So this is me as a boy. And then you can see that I'm a little bit green around the face. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Now, I'll probably get in trouble from all of your parents for drawing this, but if your parents are the parents who are likely to not let you do this, then you've got two options. You can either not do it or you can do it and don't tell them. I am not gonna influence you either way, but I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna show you how now. What you need to do is take a sheet of paper, A4 paper, put that over there, and you fold it in half this way. And then you take this top flap and you fold that flap back on itself to there and this is your basic folds and you will open that out and that will be your person. Now I'm going to use a big thick pen and draw a circle that goes sort of like this and this is going to be my face. You can do whatever you want and it doesn't have to be going Hoo! it can be eating so you can have like a dog face with a bone in its mouth or a cat with a fish in its mouth or whatever but i just thought this would be quite fun because it just reminds me of that holiday that i went on anyway next up we are going to draw a line across the middle and that's going to be where the mouth goes just make sure that line goes on both edges so when you open it out you can see the top and the bottom like that now, the next part we are going to do is a nose. And I'm going to do a couple of eyes. I'm just going to use some dots for eyes and the eyebrows just going like that because he doesn't feel too well. And I'm going to pop an ear. Make sure the ear or the ears just go above the fold, not across the fold. Otherwise, you'll have really long ears. And you can add a little bit of hair if you want. I'm going to add a little bit of hair on this one. Now next up, we open it up, and this is where I'm drawing him being sick. You can see on my one, I did this kind of shape. So what I do, I've got to not go over this line and not go below this line. And I'm gonna draw a couple of shapes that kind of look all coming out of the middle here. Just big sploshy kind of, as though it's projectile for me. Which, if you were there with me on holiday, I mean, my family would vouch for this, it was pretty bad. Few more bits coming this way. There. And then draw some like little drops like this. And don't forget, do some kind of lines of action like this. And do some little chunks as well. Always good to have little chunks. Now what we need to do is join the bottom of this head, move that to one side, all the way up to there, and then this one all the way to there. And this mouth as well goes like this. And along the bottom here, I'm drawing some teeth. Like so, and I'll probably do the same on the top. And that is it done. All you need to do now is add a bit of colour. 
So I'm going to use some felt tip, add a bit of colour, and you're done. And there you go. He's looking a bit green in the cheeks, isn't he? A bit green around the gills. He's going to blow. He's going to blow. <sighs> Have fun making your own, whether they are barfing like this or whether they're eating. It is totally up to you, but please do share them with me. And mums and dads, please don't send me any complaining emails. <sighs>